Welcome to the recipe. I am your host, Red, and you are now tuned in to the NX Podcast. The NX Podcast is the podcast that covers everything Nintendo and Xbox. But today, the NX Podcast stands for just that NX Nintendo Switch, the code name. We're talking Nintendo Switch 2, NX2 on this edition of the podcast for the simple fact that that thing is coming soon rather than later we never know when that thing could pop up it could pop up right around gamescom it could pop up at tgs it could be right after that or it could just be next year at some point we don't really know but the fact of the matter is we are living in the we don't even know but we know that nintendo is about to be like hey today's the day and we all gonna freak out so i want to talk about it before that day actually comes the day the thing actually launches is hard to talk about because, well, we haven't even seen what the thing actually is, but I want to make this podcast about that. All the things that I would want, the successor to the best-selling console of all time, the dethroner of the DS for Nintendo and the PlayStation 2. That's just legendary, and this is the next thing. Expectations. Would I say that they're high? I would say they're beyond high. But there's no space for fear of anything being like really bad. You know what I'm saying? Because the Switch was so good. You think of any IP that can pop up within the launch window, which is what I want to talk about in this episode. The launch window. What do I expect from that launch window? What is the launch window? I guess we could say 12 months. Let's just say that. (laughs) 12 months from whenever it launches. In 2025, right? What will that launch window look like? I mean, let's keep it real. Like, does it even matter? Every single IP has been so good that the sequel to those is going to be something that's going to be super exciting to every fan of them. Whether you're talking about the sequel to the first ever 3D Kirby game. If you're talking about the sequel to the first 2D Mario game in 11 years. If you're talking about the successor to the best 3D Mario of all time. And not only that, the biggest spectacle that Nintendo has ever had for one of their video game releases, Mario Odyssey. Like, worried? Not at all. Did you see Metroid Prime Far Beyond? What's to worry about? Anything that they could drop at launch, I feel, is going to be fire. If you're thinking about Smash Brothers, Ultimate was the best one ever, ever. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with all that booster cost content, best one ever, ever. So really, it's like you could just sit back, relax, knowing that when the thing launches, you know it's going to launch with some fire. You know, simple as that. Will they do a deluxe edition of Tears of the Kingdom with extra content, new story? Who knows? Who knows what they'll do? There's a ton of options. And that's what I want to discuss here today. And I'm going to break this down by three categories. What I want from the Switch 2. So that's what I just personally want from it. And what I personally don't care for. Like, so this is if they choose to do this or whatever the case may be. I really don't care because it's not really something that's going to pertain to me. And then what I hope they don't do or completely move away from. So those are the three categories. You know what I'm saying? What I hope they don't do. What I really don't care if they do do. Do do. Yeah. And because, you know, I really don't give a shit. And (laughs) what I want from uh, Nintendo Switch 2, which that's the shit that I actually do give a shit about. So, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. And and maybe one day, you know, return to this video and see what did they do that I actually wanted and what did they do that I was like, I hope they don't do that. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why this video is being made. It's always fun to, you know, predict and then be completely wrong or predict and be completely on the money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, let's get into it. What I want from Nintendo Switch 2 right here on the NX Podcast. I guess there's no better place to start than to start right where you know, if you know me, where I would. And that's new input methods, new controller standards. See, I was there from the beginning. And yes, I saw the evolution when the SNES came out and the 64 controller came out. And I saw Nintendo add new face buttons, shoulder buttons, rumble, analog sticks. You know what I'm saying? And... Then the DualShock came out, and Sony just stuck to that. 
See, because Sony's never been an actual true innovator in this gaming space. You know, they've never forced, and yes, I'm going to use the word force, their entire roster of developers to say, hey, you're now going to make all your games with this controller shaped like a wand. While everybody, all your peers in the industry are working with standard PlayStation controllers, y'all going to be working with this. And then go on to make incredible games to the point where they even try to squeeze in, you know, the motion controls into the standard controller. Still don't force it on their developers. They try to make wands and, you know, things like that. What was it called? Uh, PlayStation. What was it again? PlayStation Move? Was it? Yeah, whatever, man. Listen, <laughs> that thing. You know what I'm saying? And and it wasn't something that was forced on all their developers. You wasn't getting God of War designed around that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I mean. Have Sony done things that are innovative? I mean, these guys got VR. Nintendo and and Nintendo got cardboard VR. But not nah, for the, like, play, Xbox don't got VR, you know, PlayStation does. So I'm not trying to take nothing away from it. I'm just saying, Nintendo really introduced things that changed the landscape of gaming 1,000%. You know, that became completely standard. So yeah, when I say I want new control input methods, new controller standards... Hopefully by the end of the generation where you're seeing Sony, the next, you know, DualShock controller has whatever that thing is also. And the next Xbox controller finally caught up and got, you know, motion and got that thing in it too. That thing that Nintendo just introduced that now we can't live without because the controller just feels naked without it. I would love something like that. And I know that's a big ask. People are like, yo, that's a big ask. Because video games, you know, can only evolve so much. But Nintendo's been evolving video games for a very long time. And I truly still am probably one of the only few people who believe that there was an amazing evolution beyond the Wii Remote and Nuncha. You know, hell, I could sit here and justify an evolution, you know, beyond the Wii gamepad. You know, the Wii U gamepad. And, and that thing could have evolved in playing, you know, it still could have been, you know, something that you had that dual screen, asymmetrical gameplay and all that shit, like, it could have. But, of course, when things don't catch on like that, well, things go away. And then the old thing becomes the standard, and then nostalgia wraps around that thing, and then it becomes a, a nice shell where people don't want you to touch it, to, oh, no, no, don't ruin it, don't, don't, don't rock the boat, you know what I'm saying? And Nintendo's always been the one who was rocking the boat, you know what I'm saying? Because they're the captain of this shit. And people can say whatever they want, even PCs right now are mostly played with controllers, and every controller out there is controls made standard by who? Who designed the diamond in front of the controller? Who designed shoulder buttons? Come on, bro. Like, that's just the reality. So, yes, when I think of new Nintendo consoles, the first thing I think of is new ways to play. You know, so that can be through many ways. And I get to my next point. Innovative hardware that goes beyond just being a stronger Switch. Because a stronger Switch isn't that interesting. As much as I do want a Switch that's Series S level power, because, I mean, if it's Series S level power, then, whoa, shit going to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? Hell, this list is going to get crazy. You know, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. But, yeah, I, I want something that's special. You know what I mean? Like, when you saw the Switch, it, it just clicked, right, instantly, because you saw it all oh, the Switch. You got Switch from the TV to going on the go. You know what I'm saying? And everybody understood that. Nobody was confused. Like, wait, is it a Wii U gamepad? Like, does it leave with me? No, everybody understood. Because Nintendo was like, look, rooftop parties. And your Switch is there. And it's the star of the show. You know, like, they literally sold what the thing was. Seeing people coming to the house. Dock it. Seeing people on the plane playing Skyrim. You know what I'm saying? I, I, want, I want to know what that thing is going to be because the switch is a switch we know what a switch is we expect that but what makes now the switch cool it could be stuff like street pass you know nintendo has done many innovative things with handhelds because they've been in this handheld business going back to gaming watching shit a long ass time you know popeye and all that like it, it's it's part of their dna you know what i mean so a switch it being, you know, the home console, on the go thing, it just made sense for Nintendo because that's always who they've been. You always had a Game Boy next to your Super Nintendo, you know, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance next to your 64, your GameCube, your DS is next to your Wii, and your 3DS is Wii U, and your Now We Here, hybrid. You know what I'm saying? And then it went on to become the best-selling thing ever. So it's like, what do you add to that to make it more special? Maybe... Whatever you add to it, like, you know, that this thing that I'm talking about that's innovative for the hardware 
is part of the name. And that's why it won't be called Super Nintendo Switch 2. Because it just doesn't sell what this thing actually is. You knew what the Nintendo Switch was. Now it's going to be like Nintendo Switch, blah, blah, blah. And the blah, blah, blah might be the the whole new gimmick that makes you go, Oh, nah. I want to throw my Switch directly at the wall and let that shit explode. Blech! Because I don't need it no more. I want that. And I only want that. Because, oh, it does the blah, blah, blah. You know, in the Switch type. Like, we don't know. But... Do I expect that? Yeah, I always expect innovation uh, with Nintendo hardware. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even go this far now. You know, the Switch has a unsung, hurtful, very, very hurtful feature that from day one when I first saw it, it literally hurt my core. That when I reacted to the thing, I said, why the fuck would you do that? And I understood why they did it as the generation went on. And why they did it was Labo. But Labo wasn't better than Mario Galaxy. Labo wasn't better than Metroid Prime 3. Labo wasn't better than Red Steel 2. Labo wasn't better. I can name game after game after game after game that was on the Wii. That was on the Wii U. Whether it was Pikmin 3 playing with a Wii remote and nunchuck and all that. Bruh. They took the IR and put it at the bottom of the goddamn Joy-Con. At the bottom of the Joy-Con where it's going to sit in your palm. I said, damn. So no chance of a sensible Wii Remote-like controls. I don't expect any Virtual Console style thing with Wii games and everything. Because they ain't got no way to do it. Well, I'm asking now to write that wrong. Move that shit t- somewhere next to your, your shoulder buttons. So that when we play, we shoot our, our, our shoulders, uh, 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 button presses isn't getting in the way of the actual IR. And it's going towards, I don't know, maybe you don't need a TV no more. Or maybe there's another new sensor bar. And now you can play games like you could on the Wii. And maybe they can sell. We're going to get to that. The point is, I want them to move that up to where it properly belongs. Because I don't expect you to do Labo again. I don't think anybody expects you to do Labo again. I don't think anybody at this point, at this time, in life, wants to go and spend mad money on cardboard. It worked. You did it, Nintendo. Smart ass hustle. Nobody wants that again. You know what I'm saying? Do I want that kind of creativity? Of course. That's what I'm talking about with the first two things that I talked about here. You know what I'm saying? And hell, even this right now, this third topic of, you know, moving the Joy-Con IR to a better position so we can utilize it like we could. On the Wii and play and do super cool shit. Use it like a mouse on our screen to navigate menus. All that stuff. Like, I really love that. I really did enjoy that. Why get rid of something that was so innovative to controls? I just think that's a step back. We got to keep it going forward. People are like, oh, but you know, you got the gyroscopic mode. Yeah, that shit ain't the same, right? I got to always be recalibrated and recalibrated. It ain't the same. If you actually played with both, you would know. Those are two different. It's like saying, you don't need an analog stick. You got the D-pad. Listen, hush. Hush, if you don't even never use an analog stick and you're a D-pad only user, what are you doing? Relax, because I use what you use and this thing. You only use that thing and you talk to me about this thing like, nah, this is the way. Because you want to be closed-minded, stuck in your ways, the old school way. The only way is the only way. Nah, stick to that, all right? And let some people who actually want to see video games grow and go beyond. A person who's used to seeing video games grow every single time beyond graphics. Yeah, let me let me let me get my shit off right now. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would like that to happen, right? And the reason for that is so that they can sell also Wii and Wii U games on their marketplace, on their eShop, because it just makes sense. But I'm gonna talk about the eShop and all that a little bit a little bit later. Just just a little bit later. But anyway, um what I expect, you know what I'm saying, is third party games there, you know, at launch too. A lot of third-party games. And who knows? Maybe these third-party games could use these features. Maybe they won't. But, you know, Black Ops 6 will probably be that launch because there is a signed agreement. So it might just be smart to get a Call of Duty game out like Black Ops. You know? Day one. It just makes perfect sense. Because I'm certain, I'm certain there's going to be a lot of multiplayer games day one that are just service games that people on Switch already are accustomed to playing. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to go on my Switch and I'm going to expect to be able to download fucking Fortnite, right? Like, imagine you getting your Switch too and be like, oh, no, you got to wait for the port of Fortnite. Like, that shit sounds crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, Roblox, Fortnite, all that shit, that, that's going to be there. That's even goes without saying, like, uh, like, legit. You know, I'll bring it up later when I talk about, 
you know, a, a launch lineup and stuff like that. Cause that's a whole nother segment I want to do on this episode, but, uh, you know, not just the things that I want, the things that I don't care for and the things that I really don't want to happen. I'm also going to talk about what I expect at the actual launch window. Like I said, you know, so yeah, we'll get to that. You know, I'm just trying not, I'm trying to do this in a way that I don't spoil you that segment. So yeah, third party games, black Ops six, doom, the dark ages, monster hunter wilds, I totally expect Super Street Fighter 6 there at launch. Because Street Fighter with a Nintendo console, it just sounds so good. It just sounds so nice. And seeing Super Street Fighter probably alongside a Super Nintendo Switch, you never know. They might stick to that name. Hey, look, I'm not saying stick to that name like they ever said it would be that name. I'm just saying it's the name that I've been sticking to. So hopefully, you know, it might stick and it might happen. But uh, uh, Super Street Fighter 6 with all the Akumas in there, everything, you don't got to download shit. It's part of the package. I could see that being a new release across everything in 2025. Like the, again, the ultimate version, but just, you know, from the start, just say call it Super Street Fighter 6, uh, uh, Ultimate or whatever the flip, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I could see that at launch. Every sports game known to man will be there at launch with WWE, NBA, uh, 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 MLB will be there, you know what I'm saying? Because that's always on everything. Like, Madden, all that shit, all that will be there, you know what I'm saying, do do, uh, 2K got some tennis games on there, yeah, those will be there probably too, you know what I'm saying, everybody's gonna wanna be there, you gotta understand, this is the successor to the best selling console of all time, this is the successor to the console that Nintendo basically did everything right on when it came to software, where they're leading us out of the generation, like this, like, look, we got sexy ass Samus Aaron for you. We got sexy ass Zelda for you. They're going to lead you to the promised land, to the new console. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've never done it this good to be like, oh, yeah, we got Mario and Luigi. The bros are coming through. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to be jumping platforming over there. Like, yeah, this shit is hype. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of big IPs, franchises that are coming at the tail end of the console, which has never been a thing. They've always been shaky with the end of the generation. And I ain't worried like, oh, they were shaky with the end, with, with, uh, the end of the generation previously. You know what I'm saying? But then the beginnings were pretty good for, for a lot of the generations. I'm like, what if they were good this time, but then start the next one, you know, kind of off. Like, I, I don't even have that worry. I don't. Because I know there's been way too many years between too many of my favorite Nintendo developers last release. Where I'm like, bro, y'all don't understand. By 20, man, I don't want to spoil you my other segment. We'll get there. But by 2025, I got a game in my segment. You're going to be like, you lying. You really think that's going to happen? And I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, watch, you're you, you going you gonna to see. <laughs> you're going to see. But uh, yeah, I expect at launch, other than sports games, like, you know, I guess new to the other consoles and free of the shackles of PlayStation comes square games and you name them you list them final fantasy that one final fantasy this one final fantasy online have yourself a happy happy kingdom hearts collection like all of that shit that's definitely going to happen i actually have that in my list of games for the launch window but it's not really much of a spoiler because that's just reality you know what i'm saying i expect that launch to be pretty like that but we're going to talk more about the launch later that was just a little teaser right so let's get into you know uh uh I, I, the reason why I say new third-party games like Black Ops 6, Doom, The Dark Ages, Monster Hunter Wild, Super Street Fighter, all the sports games and, and them square games and stuff like that, because those are fairly new, is because, I mean, that's what I want to see. I want to see new releases. Doom is a new release next year. New releases. That's what I want. New, 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 new. That's just teasing a whole other thing for later. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the online, because I definitely want an updated online service. I need that updated online service right and not to be forgotten at all because i understand that nintendo isn't only on nintendo and i understand that nintendo is also on mobile devices yes you can play a lot of nintendo ip outside of their hardware nowadays you know people don't like to talk about it they like to act like xbox is the only one running around putting shit everywhere but nintendo's doing things and putting shit in, in multiple places too so i don't want to forget their mobile app now i'm not really talking mobile games but they do do mobile games so their mobile app should be way better than the current Switch mobile app, which is very, 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 what's the word? Would I say bad, awful, garbage, or trash? I'm going to go with manure. Yeah, so update that. You know what I'm saying? Completely. Like, completely. I want to be able to 
take pictures on my console, capture footage on my console, like I currently could. I expect the controller to have a capture button and all that, right? But have them go directly to the app. Almost just like what, not almost, it's exactly what Xbox does with your pictures. You can send them to the Xbox Live Cloud. And then you can get them on your app, instantly download from there, and post. You don't got to do the whole, hold on, let me let me get the Switch, do the whole picture thing. Oh, no, but before that, I got to, oh, yeah, let me log into that. And then da -da -da, go to the website now, self-download every single thing. Like, yeah, like, get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's 2020, it's 2025, bro. Like, step your shit up, for real, for real. Like, it's not even asking for too much. That, your game, huh? You know what I mean? Like, completely. So, uh, have the pics and the clips, go to the app. Definitely want that. I want to be able to send messages and voice chat freely on the console. Yes, again, I could say 2025, but again, it's 2025 and I'm saying this shit. So clearly years don't matter for these features. It's just about they don't want to do it. They don't got to do it. They're not going to do it. And people will accept that. I understand that. And I've accepted that too. Hence why I play most of my third party games, well, all of my third party games on Xbox or on the PC. You know what I'm saying? And I play strictly exclusively on my Nintendo console. You know what I mean? But when I play exclusives like Splatoon and Mario Kart and Smash Brothers and potential Metroid Prime 4 multiplayer modes and stuff like that, I would like seamless, comfortable voice chat. I mean, for crying out loud, you signed a 10-year deal to get Call of Duty. Can we get some comfortable voice chat? And I would like that voice chat to still work with the app. And I would be able to send messages from the app to someone who's on that console. This is basic stuff. It's called the Nintendo Switch app. I signed in with my account. Then let me use it properly the fact that i got friends on my switch list that aren't even people that i can go yo let's play this game today or let's play that game today it'd be different i'd probably play more online switch games if i could just be like hey yo you want to play that this weekend you want to play this, 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 this and it'll be something like that or if people could just seamlessly invite you they see you on the console and it would just feel you know uh more alive but we're gonna get to that um we're gonna get to that so Installing games from the app, that should be also standard. You know what I'm saying? You got all these games on your online. Blah, blah, blah. You basically download the like console and then you just play from in there. But yeah, if you, you know, you're know going to buy something on the eShop, why not have the eShop on your mobile phone? So you can you know, purchase something while you out and about. And then when you get home, it's right there. Or you could purchase something while you out and about on your Switch. You know what I'm saying? And you got your online connection right there. You don't even got a tether in. You're like, you know what, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to play that in like five minutes. I know it's installing in my bag right now as we speak. You know what I'm saying? Because it's on my, my, my switch is connected to my phone, hotspot and all that. Like, you know, you could, it's just, it makes life more convenient to be able to say, oh yeah, I could download things. I could send messages. I could voice chat. I could do that all on my switch or I could do it off my switch and, and, and prep for when I get to my switch. That's a message. Hey, I'm going to be on at this time, bro. I'm on my way home, bro. Like and any of these things, it just makes the user experience better, bro. That splash is about to go down. What team you picking? You you don't even know right now if you can't connect with the people on your goddamn console. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so this is not a big ass. This makes gaming better. This makes gaming more inclusive and user friendly. And I know that there's dangers that come with it. But why is it that only Nintendo, only Nintendo seems to be the only company on God's green earth that is like, nah, man, nah, like, but everybody else is fine. Nobody, I don't see nobody getting done dirty by these uh, messaging systems and voice chat or nothing like that. They actually, they got technology now in place to make it even better. Hell, I feel like voice chat has gotten better since Xbox put a lot of these mandates now. And, oh, yeah, you know, there's AI listening to you. So if you use these words, blah, 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 you could get banned and all that. I feel it made it better. So there's a lot of things that Nintendo can put in place if they're worried about that kind of thing. You know, there's also parental control. So parents could be parents. I've said that for years, but, you know, that's asking too much it seems to just go on your kid's console and put parental control so that they can't buy games you know they can't just buy a bunch of v-bucks off your card then you cry and talk about i want to sue epic because my kid did your kid did what something that you could have easily prevented but then come on now like so i feel like yeah we in an era where there's plenty of workarounds for whatever situation you want to claim is the reason why they not gonna do these features that are standard to basically every single device known to me your phone does it, your PlayStation does it, your Xbox does it, your PC does it, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just wild. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, installing games and apps and, uh, you know, the news portion that they have currently on the Switch. I like that where you can see, like, oh, the latest Nintendo Direct and things like that or latest trailers. I've always liked the Nintendo channel when they originally did that on the Wii. 
and the Nintendo channel had uh, the Nintendo show on it. You know what I'm saying? With with uh, what was it? Evil Gary and and all that. Like that was something that they continued on on the DS. They had the show with the lady. I don't remember her name. Then they would do other shows, and then they just stopped doing that. I feel like to bring your console, you know, more more you know character, more life, and all that. You know, I feel like yeah, having a show like that would be good, you know what I'm saying, like, would be really cool, and the way I see it is, it could be a weekly thing, a bi-weekly thing, where they just talk about the latest releases in the eShop and things like that, I like stuff like that, so I would say do it, even if not many people watching it, you know what I'm saying, if you got a few people who get their video game news through that, you know, that channel right now, I'm saying, and then on the next console, that channel is more robust with an actual show that they could watch every week, that's like, hey, Nintendo, I was gonna say Nintendo Minute, but you know what I'm saying, like, Nintendo uh, 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 eShop, you know, this week's release is whatever the case may be, and you watch it, and it tells you, oh, blah, 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 is out now, blah, blah, right, and it has the links to it right under that, like, it just makes perfect sense to me for them to do something like that, especially with the fact that they're going to have so many games, again, they're coming off the best-selling console of all time, and let's say they do move that IR up, and then they are selling on the eShop their whole old catalog, you know, Wii and Wii U, and Switch, obviously the Switch games are going to be there, but, you know, you know, all the way back to the NES, so you can get them within the subscription, you could get them outside the subscription, this show will be perfect to highlight those releases as they roll out throughout the generation, because they're not just going to all be dumped day one, like, oh yeah, you could just get everything, day one on the eShop, I think the eShop will just become a thing that grows and grows and grows, you know, until one day it'll grow, you know, beyond even Nintendo hardware and be something where you can access through the cloud and stuff like that because you know nintendo nintendo will do stuff like that also in the future um but yeah i think you know news updates on your console is you know something that people don't really think of but is a cool thing and yeah that's the other thing that i wanted to actually mention but i kind of already touched on is adding you know more consoles to nintendo switch online and having those actually purchased outside of the online on the eShop. So if people want to own these games, have it in their console so that they can play those games without a subscription, they can. Because right now, the only option you have is to rent Nintendo's old catalog on their new hardware. And I think they should have a way for you to actually have some kind of digital ownership over it without having to be, you know, constantly paying a subscription. And then, you know, if they did add the Wii, GameCube, Wii U, all those games... They're going to basically say, oh, yeah, well, we did expansion pass. Now this is the ultimate pass, and you can get those games. So it, it'll be even more expensive to even rent, you know, those games, you know. And expensive, it's a funny term because it's like you could just pay the year and, you know, just add, play all the games and then be done with it forever. But it's like there's some people want to go back all the time, and some people don't want to just be paying for a subscription all the time. So I think it's good to have multiple ways for people to access your catalog. You know, versus only having a rental option. Imagine if Game Pass was the only way that you could play games on Xbox. But that's not the case. You can play games, disc, digitally, cloud, outside of the Xbox. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they they give you ownership, rental option, whatever the case may be. You could subscribe to Game Pass for a year, forever, and be like, yeah, I just play games that way. Or there's a thousand different ways. You know, I could sit here and give you... A million different examples of Xbox. The point is that, yeah, I feel Nintendo should definitely have a more option, you know, based way to get their stuff versus just the one choice. They, they, should, they should add options. Options is always good. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, the next thing. And this is something that I feel like I shouldn't even have to say. But it seems that there's a lot of people out there that don't even expect this of the next console. And I'm like, damn, that's like some deal level, deal breaking level shit right there. Like, But anyway, 4K and HDR. That does not mean that, oh my God, the game's got to be 4K and now they can't be, you know, 2K upscale to 4K. I'm just saying I want 4K output and I want HDR on Nintendo games. Because Nintendo games is all about color. And there's this new technology that isn't new anymore, but will be new to them. It's called HDR. High dynamic range. Goes up to 10 now. They even got Dolby Vision. You know, that would be awesome 
with the next Mario game, the next Mario Kart game, the next Zelda game, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond 4K HDR. Dreams. Dreams. Should come true, Nintendo. Come on. <laughs> For real. Like, 4K HDR. I need that. I want that. I'm so used to playing my games. Like that. And listen, I game most of the time with a Series X, with a Beast PC. I game most of the time on a Series S just because I do. You know, a lot of the times I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to game in bed. And I'll game a bit. And it's on the Series S because that's what I got hooked up to that TV. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It is what it is. There's going to be some people who, who are going to be with their, you know, Series X on their main team and be like, oh, yeah, in the bedroom, I just use my fire stick and I play... You know, continue playing Starfield through that. And it's like, yeah, makes sense. Options. Awesome thing. You know what I'm saying? But when you got a Series X or a Beast PC and you're playing on uh, Series S, you know what I'm saying? Like you're playing through the cloud, which is not going to be the best experience. It's not going to output the best picture. Yeah. You know, I think I think you're... you're not sitting there asking for the highest thing in the world. You're just asking for the bare minimum for these beautiful Nintendo games. And that's just, let them output at 4K. Give us some HDR. It's okay, man. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, that's one of the reasons why I don't game a lot on, like, the cloud or anything like that. Because it's like, damn, I want that HDR. I like that HDR. I need that HDR. You know what I'm saying? HDR is just nice. It's just nice, man. It's just nice to look at. 4K is just nice to look at. So asking for that. On 2025 hardware. Oh, but it's a handheld. It's a zip it, zippy. I don't care. I don't care. It's not my job to care. My job is to say what I want from this thing right now. It's not to care about, oh, yeah, but then the battery life for the handheld. Here's the thing. I don't fucking want a handheld. I want a Nintendo console. Like, I've always bought one since the NES. I understand that they don't give a shit, and they're going to make their hybrid cool. But... When I'm using it, 99, no, I mean, yeah, basically 99, I'm, I'm going to give it 1%. You know what I mean? I might, might want to take a shit one day and be like, I mean, let me take this shit with me. But other than that, that shit is connected to the TV the whole time. Yeah, I wanted to take advantage of my TV. That's not even a new TV, for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a big ask. It's not a big ask at all. But people like to make it out to be, you know what I'm saying, when it's not. But anyway, now, these are the, these are the ones I feel like go without saying need to be said full backwards compatibility and full forward compatibility yes forward compatibility that means i don't need to go out and rebuy and rebuy and rebuy and you don't need to re-release and re-release and re-release just to let my shit that i bought on my switch play way better when i put it on my new shit switch too simple ask that's it that, that'd be not nice. and they'd be like yo that's not a simple ask you're right it's not it's a big ask but it's a it's a it's a consumer friendly thing that a lot of companies will probably want to skip around but i hope nintendo won't i hope nintendo will get with the actual tech that's out there you know what i'm saying because listen if you're not going to be the most powerful console cool but you can spend some of that fucking money y'all make money hand over fist and put it into these kind of features then you know what I'm saying? To make everything around your lower, you know, powered hardware really robust and beautiful and great. You know what I'm saying? That makes you be like, you know what? I don't mind buying it on that console because when I play it on the next console, it's going to look even better. So those people who bought ugly ass Mortal Kombat 1. Yes, ugly ass Mortal Kombat 1. Your shit is going to look pretty now. Maybe close to the Series S version. Isn't that a good thing? Without you having to go and spend a fucking dollar. Or you had to, well, you did have to spend a dollar. But the dollars had to be for the hardware. Nothing more. Nothing less. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no, it's only going to be $10. It's for the upgrade. No, fuck that. Fuck the $10 upgrade. Fuck the charging for it. You can do it. Just do it. Just do it. People already gave you their fucking money. Just upgrade their games. And make them play better on the new thing. Instead of nickel and diamond. I know nickel and diamond is the is the the recipe for success for them. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. But damn, that's one of the things, man, on my on 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 the, you know, what I hope they move away from. But we'll get to that. So yeah, full backwards compatibility, forward compatibility. I would love that, you know, with controllers and everything. 
where they're compatible. You know what I'm saying? So if the new thing that I was talking about earlier that's added to the controller or the, the, the new game is taking advantage of the IR now being in the actual proper place, of course you're not going to use an old Joy-Con, an old you know, Switch Pro Controller. You're going to use a new Pro Controller and the new Joy-Cons that come attached to the new Nintendo Switch, you know? But where it can be, like, oh, yeah, we're just playing 2D Mario. All you're using is basically these few buttons. Yeah, let me, you know, use these old controllers so that they don't go to waste and then just become waste in some, you know, waste place. Like, you know, just trash. They're just ruining the earth. So, yeah, forward compatibility is super important to me. Like, super, even more so than backwards compatibility. But it's like, isn't that the same thing? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but when you add that forward, it's not the same thing. It's different. You know, it's way different. And I've been used to forward compatibility with all my purchases due to Xbox. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to mention that. You know, because everybody always likes to throw shade at Xbox. Be like, oh, yeah. Well, first party games, they get that right, then they be mad. But, you know, they throw shade at that. And I get it. When they shit was in all that, when it was just Gears of War, Forza, and, and Halo, I get it. Nintendo fans, we like, yo, look, at we got this, that, 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 that. And not only that, but that one thing got like 17 spinoff, bro. And dumb shits make like 20 million each. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I get that. You know what I'm saying? But it's the same thing when they do things that it's just like, look what they doing over there. That shit's on that, 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 that on this side. Then people be like, nah, why you gotta, why you gotta, why you gotta, nah, I'm, listen, when you come to the NX podcast, you came here to listen to a guy who loves equally Nintendo or Xbox and is going to talk about their negatives equally, their positives equally. And that's what it is. You got to get used to that. If you can't get used to that, this is probably not the place for you. But if it is the place for you and you've been enjoying this, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Do that. Do that. Do that. So anyway, uh, what else? All right. So the final thing I'm going to mention, right? So we can get into the little negative stuff. And then we can get to the launch of the actual console and what games I expect to be in that window. So the last thing here for what I definitely, definitely, definitely want. I want the console... It's a hybrid. It's a console to me. I want the console. It's a hybrid console, right? Look, I want the goddamn Switch 2 to have character, to have life, soul, culture. You know that Nintendo culture all over it. I want community. Of course, I already mentioned voice chat and messaging and community i see these me's man but i don't see these me's the way i want to see these me's you know what i mean so i want community back i want sounds and they could be adjustable you could turn them off you could keep them on but give us sounds it was so nice to have sounds you know aura on your menu just background oh you turned on your wii u today you'd be like god damn why does shit feel like it's popping over here but at the same time feel like nobody here because they all went to a party where they can't even see each other it was like one of those parties where you put headphones on fucking vr goggles y'all all all in the same room but y'all actually not interacting you know what i'm saying some some waitress is coming and sticking a fucking straw in your mouth get drunk motherfucker yeah turn up and you ain't seeing shit you in some virtual world like yeah that's fun but you know how much better it is when you take off the goggles and it's like, yo, look, those are real. Like, you know, <laughs> and vice versa. Like, it's just better. But anyway, anyway. Uh, yeah, so I just want soul, character. I want themes. You open up a 3DS and then, oh, shit. Like, oh, I forgot. It was a Zelda theme on that. A Sonic theme on that. Uh, name it. Metroid 2 theme on that. Ocarina Time theme on that. 3D world theme on that. There was themes all over, kid. Icarus, all kinds of themes, bro. I want themes. They said we got black and white. Everybody will say, we get themes this generation. Yeah. I said, you want to bet? It'd be funny to shit go the whole gen and they don't. I don't think they're going to do that. But I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And guess what they did? They didn't do shit. And I was like, I'm not the bad guy, bro. I just call a spade a spade. And when I, I know how these guys move. I know what they do, you know? Bare minimum, bare minimum right now. Anyway, so, yeah. And I'll throw in, you know, to wrap this point up of, you know, the console having an actual soul. So, yeah, community, sounds, themes. But I could throw in that Nintendo show that I mentioned in, in the news section. 
That gives the console soul. When you go in there, you know, there's people, there's characters that you can look at who are talking about Nintendo and doing skits and shit like that. That's mad cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I met the, the people who did the Nintendo show on the Wii, at, at, uh, the Nintendo store and all that. And it was it was during the uh, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter? Yeah, I think Monster Hunter Tree. Yeah, Monster Hunter Tree release. It was during that. And, you know, I was actually in the damn thing. So I look at it and I go... That kind of stuff is cool. You know what I'm saying? Like the people on that line knew who they were. And the only place they were really accessible was through your console. It wasn't even like that shit was really on YouTube like that at the time. So yeah, I would like to see that return. Now, let's talk about the things that I personally don't give a shit for. Like I personally just don't care. Like I don't care for full price old games that are currently, you know, the price of goddamn I don't know, a sandwich right now on the Xbox, on the PlayStation, on the PC. But since, oh, yeah, the console can now run it, here they come, and they're coming full price. Nah, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not buying that. I got, if I got a console like a Series X that's going to be stronger, you know, according to what people say, then, because we don't know, like, then the uh, Nintendo Switch 2 is like, yeah, I don't care to buy a game that I could, oh, yeah, you could get Red Dead Redemption 2 here for 60 bucks, or I could get it right here for 19.99. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I ain't going to sit there and be spending 50, 60 more dollars, you know, to get a game on Nintendo hardware just because, oh, it's on Nintendo hardware. And that's like, but what is the benefit? Like, if there's new control gimmicks and stuff like that, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But even those, I'm like, eh, for the old one, maybe it's a game that I like and madly in love with. And it's like, yeah, it takes advantage of the controls and the new thing. Then I might consider it. But really, I'm more into the idea of like, oh, yeah, new controls and Call of Duty takes advantage of it. Or Call of Duty has motion controls on on nintendo switch 2 but it don't on series x well guess what i could play for free on series x so i could actually now buy it on nintendo you know what i'm saying and play it here and, and have this experience here with the controls that i might like better because i loved playing even though listen back in the day I, that's what i did i bought call of duty 4 then call of duty reflex black ops 2 i bought you know multiple on multiple hardware like i bought um what was it uh 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 yeah, Black Ops 1, matter of fact. That I got on 360, and I got on Wii. You know, I think that was the one that came out day and day. In Modern Warfare 3, I did the same exact thing. Like, I was playing it on both because I liked both experience. Even though there was a graphic discrepancy, good gameplay got me in. And those Call of Duty games had good gameplay because I love the Wii Remote and Nutshell gameplay. So, yeah, like, new games, sure. I get it, you know, Dark Ages and all that. Yeah, I, there's... There's incentive to, oh, yeah, Dark Ages looks really good on the Switch, too. And it also has motion controls and all that. And it don't got that on Series X. And, yeah, you could play it through Game Pass, but then yeah, I could own it on this, too. So I could still get the best of both worlds. The best-looking game, I could play that version of it, whether it's on PC, Game Pass, or my Series X. And then I could play one that plays really good and say, yeah, I'm going to play it on harder difficulties on the Nintendo hardware. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. That's just cool, you know? So, yeah. And, and, you know, cartridges, I already got a stack of physical media. It's the only console I still got physical media for, my Nintendo one. So maybe I'll stick to physical media. Right now, I'm kind of leaning towards going all digital. But if I stick to physical media, then it's like, yeah, I got that game and I got it physically. And it's a competent version of the game that also plays better than any of the other versions to me personally. You know, so then that gives me incentive. But like an old ass game being $60, oh, yeah, we're just here because, you know, we didn't want to miss the party everybody's gonna be here successor to the best-selling console of all time and it's like yeah cool again i'm not mad you there but i'm not really with it you know what i'm saying so yeah i'm not really with it because if it's not gonna run look better you know it, it's gonna be 50 dollars more and all that nah man i don't want you to be like oh mortal kombat 1 is coming now to nintendo switch 2 oh come on man where that forward compatibility at that's what i'm gonna think because I've been living with that already for over five years. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to pretend like, oh, yeah, I live in a bubble. and I don't. Like, if anything, my bubble then is Nintendo and Xbox. So, yeah, those comparisons are going to be made because, again, I'm not in the bubble. And I'm not going to separate these two things so much. Like, they, you know, in completely different stratosphere to the point where I'll accept practices that aren't in my favor on one box. Because, well, you know, I, I mean, I love that console. It is what it is. And then, like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, oh, nah, that's whack over there. So I'm going to stick... And that aspect, I'll stick to Xbox, you know, something like that. Like, I mean, I understand some of y'all might want to, you know, just play that Elden Ring base game, lower frame rate, no DLC added, but cost the price 
of a fully brand new game and be all right with that. But me, nah, man, I'm not with it. Just keeping it real. Like, I'm not, it's not about fanboy. It's not about console allegiance with me or nothing. It's like, I am going to play Nintendo games because I love Nintendo IP. They're my favorite my top favorite video game IPs are Nintendo ones. But I love Xbox IPs. I need Forza Horizon. That's one of my favorite games in existence. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. Like, people are like, yo, I can't wait for the next Halo, the next Gears. I'm like, yo, man, I need the next Forza. No, not really. I'm really happy right now with five. But anyway. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I personally don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't want, like, oh, yeah, Mortal Kombat now is coming. And it's fully priced because, hey, look, it's Mortal Kombat. It's on new content. Like, nah. That shit... Not that it's like, oh, it's super old, but is it an edition with all the content and everything? Fine. But the thing is, I don't even give it the fine because it's already available on Nintendo Switch. So Switch 2 should play that version, and that version should just get better. If you're going to do the work to make a whole new version, give it to the people who already own it. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, yeah, man. And that's why I said, like, Super Street Fighter 6, you know, a new edition that's going to come on every platform earlier. I didn't just say, oh, yeah, Street Fighter 6. Because, yeah, Street Fighter 6 could be one of these games. And it's like, yeah, it's full price. Cool. But I could get it for $40 right now on Xbox. So, yeah, I'd rather do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up. Like, it just is what it is. So, and that's the place where it's like, oh, yeah, if you want options, like, yeah, you know, there's way more uh, probably fight, fighter sticks and, and bullshit. Oh, you play keyboard and mouse. People, there's just a lot of options with that game, too, on these consoles. Oh, it'll be probably played that version at tournaments and stuff like that. So, yeah, or, or the Switch version might be a lower frame rate. You don't know. And they'd be like, yeah, we're going to charge full price just because we hit. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Sorry. Sorry. Got to call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to also say something else I really don't care for, but I know that they'll probably do if they don't do forward compatibility, if they don't reintroduce their legacy hardware games into the eShop. Re-releasing a bunch of Nintendo old games. Full price. I'm not interested. You saw me Metroid Prime. You saw me Galaxy 1, Sunshine, 3D World. I, I, was that even full price? I don't know if it was. Maybe that, that was 60, but that was three games. And it had Mario Galaxy, which is literally one of my favorite games in my top 10 of all time. You know what I'm saying? Fine. You saw me, though, one of my little favorite, another one, top 10 favorite games of all time, Metroid Prime. The most beautiful version of that game. I mean, stunning. And this is a game that I bought. Every single time they re-released it, literally, I bought the original releases on Cube and Wii, then I bought the, the trilogy, then I bought the digital version of the trilogy on Wii U, and then I bought remastered for 40. I ain't spending 60, you know what I'm saying, and all, or, or none of that, like, nah, man, I'm good, I'm good. But that's why I want to now segue to what I don't want, you know what I'm saying, because those are the things I don't care for, like, they could do it, but I'm just not interested in buying that stuff, so that's not stuff that I'm going to give them points for, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just don't appeal to me, it is what it is. Understand this. I say all that to say I don't want them to do $70 games. And I know Tears of the Kingdom wasn't a test. Tears of the Kingdom was a warning. Letting us know. Get ready. The next 3D Mario. The next Mario Kart. The next Smash Brothers. The next Platoon. All of that shit. $70. And I'm like, I'd rather you didn't. Look around, bruh. Times is hard all over the world. But look, I I'd rather you didn't. Why? For the simple fact that you can just make incentives to sell an $80 version for all of these releases. Why? Because all of these releases are big enough. See, Nintendo legitimately doesn't need to do 70 They can literally say, all right, this Nintendo game come with this little bullshit plastic nostalgia. That's the ultimate limited whatever the fuck edition. And that costs, it could be $70, $10 more, or it could be $20 more. And they could do whatever they want with every single one. And they don't got to do giant statues, $200 editions. No, they could just do the bare minimum. Oh, yeah, look, you get a little Triforce, you know, thing and a sticker set of, you know, goddamn Zelda and Link and Gandalf. And yeah, that's your thing for the new Zelda game, $80. You know what I'm saying? People would be like, hey, I'm going to get it anyway. I, I, I want the little trinkets. I'll pay the 80 So the guy who was like, yo, you just said that you didn't want $70 games. I did. But then they got you with the, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now how they could get you and you be comfortable, way more comfortable than like, yo, $70 games. God damn. You know what I did with Zelda? $70, right? This is the NX podcast. Let me tell you, in case you don't know, if you knew around here, this is what I did. I went on Xbox Rewards, scroll down to the Walmart gift card. That shit was like, I don't know how many points. It was like 30 thousand points i don't know what it was it was a 25 dollar walmart gift card got that right which makes it free because i use xbox points went on walmart 
pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom with $25 off. Why? Because it was $70. And I said, I haven't purchased one $70 game to this day. And the one that would have made me fold, I still find a way to not pay $70 for that shit. Hence my point, I don't want to pay $70 for games. And I'm just keeping it real. I know a lot of people would be like, nah, man, I don't want to say that stuff. Because then it's going to make me look like I'm super broke. I'm like, nah, man, I'm telling you for real, for real, I don't want to pay $70 for each of these games. For the simple fact that, look, 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 I'm going to tell you something real, real tough. Five hundred hours into Forza Horizon Five, right? And this is coming off of five hundred hours in Forza Horizon Four. It's one of my favorite video games. I bought forty dollars DLC for the previous game, the Lego shit, the Fortune Island. They gave me the game for free. I bought the DLC, all of it, to get in early access on Forza Horizon Five. So when the game gets delisted because the cars are there, the music is there. They give me the game for free. Yet again, that's awesome. It's literally one of my favorite games. I loved Halo Infinite single player. That game was worth every penny. But they gave it to me in my service. Look, like I said, I don't live in the bubble. The reality is I get mad, good, great, amazing video games through Game Pass. Asking $70 a pop for each release now is fucking crazy. And I know for most people, they be like, oh, this guy's bugging. Like, nah, you're bugging. Because I'm actually living in a world where I'm not sitting there and because of console legion, I'm buying games that are in Game Pass full price on PlayStation just to ride PlayStation. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I made the right move. Hence why I could go, you know what, Hellblade? Oh, it's only 30 frames on Series X. Cool. Play it on my PC. Thanks, Game Pass. And I played that game, what? 60 frames per second. Everything set to high. Beautiful. Like, that was the experience I had thanks to that. Like, this shit just gives me mad opportunity to not spend full price on the game, but get options to play games anywhere on my phone, on the computer, on my console, everywhere. It's just game distribution is way different now, way different, you know? So asking $70 a pop for every little thing, it's just fucking crazy, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just personally not interested in $70 game, but is it coming? Probably. And most people, are they going to be fine? absolutely but i'm just keeping it real you know what i'm saying and i know that's something that a lot of people claim to be and claim to say they are but they don't actually move like and talk like i'm actually being real you know what i'm saying i know a lot of y'all don't want to pay 70 dollars a pot you know what i'm saying i know a lot of y'all probably do got it like that where 70 dollars out of every single check every single check is like yeah nothing but that's still only one game you know what i'm saying like you are 70 70 70 years like yeah i already paid for game pass for the year like i'm i'm good bro i'm getting call of duty in here i'm getting this in there i'm getting that in the indiana jones perfect dark doom like bro i'm i'm really good like and uh, 70 dollars you bugging like again but that's just me but thank god for xbox like i said they give me ways to even get games on other consoles for good prices bro ah, gotta love it man gotta love it but yeah i really truly believe instead of going 70 they should keep it 60 and then just all of their releases make special editions because nintendo fans love nostalgia nintendo fans love that shit like oh yeah you selling me a little thing a little oh that one comes with an amiibo that one comes with a bruh like it's simple you could do it way and i feel like you could get more money out of them just by doing that you know what i'm saying like out of every customer including me who will be like yeah oh yeah the, the, the mario the 3d mario game of course i'm gonna get the best edition of it oh metroid prime oh, on the switch oh they got a version that comes with a little uh, screw attack, like like screw attack statue samus or or anything but like, yeah that shit a hundred dollars i hope i can get a pre-order like you know what i mean like i feel like the industry already has shown ways that they fucking get money out of us as gamers so why did the standard price of a fucking video game had to go so high? And what bothers me the most about it is that it goes so high and the guys who started this shit don't even stick by that price because two weeks later after a game comes out from any fucking third party, they drop $25. But if Nintendo goes 70, they shit never drop. And then they didn't do no Nintendo Select player's choice. So we ain't never gonna get no goddamn deals on their games. And when they do do deals, it's gonna be the price of a regular game right now. $60. Buy it now while it's on deal. Yeah, it's on deal. It's a deal. It's on sale. And I'm be like, that ain't a fucking sale that's the regular price what the fuck are we talking about here like but that's the reality the guys who don't drop prices gonna go to 70 and they're gonna be reaping the rewards of it while the other guys were like yeah i'll give you 70 now y'all bleeding out over there y'all bleeding out y'all can't even fucking keep your games at that price for fucking three weeks come on dog like what are y'all doing man just introducing shit to to this industry that y'all ain't even gonna stand by just fucking it up for everybody else you know the people actually want to play video games and don't only play three games a year, so they good paying 70 for games. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of here with that shit. Fuck out of here. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, 
Um, no more full price remasters. I already said that. I already said that. But you already know. It, like, come on. It's, it, stop it. Stop. If it's a remake, I get it. But let it be a remake. But a remaster? No more full price. No more. Sorry. Uh, what else? So, yeah. What I don't want them to not do is something that I mentioned that I want them to do, which is not have voice chat or messaging as part of the OS. I don't want that. I'm, oh, yeah, the mobile app now is a little bit better. You know what I mean? Now it's like less steps for you to start a voice chat, but you can only do voice chat on that. You can't do it on your console. I'm like, come on, man. Fuck out of here with that. Like, <laughs> it's the way I feel. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't want to see them still on that time where it's like, yeah, no messaging, no voice chat, no nothing. Um, Trash analog sticks. I don't want that. We know the Joy-Cons have trash analog sticks, period. You know what I'm saying? And this is not shitting on Nintendo because, listen, this is, again, the NX podcast. I think Xbox Series X controllers build quality. I love the way they feel. 10 out of 10. The build quality, it's the console that I've went through the most controllers now. I've been through five of them shits. That's basically a controller a year. Now, great, the first two, they replaced for free. But the red one I got now, I bought that shit, you know? It was on sale for like 40 bucks. But still, yeah, it's 40 bucks. Why? Because paying 60, 70, 80 for these shits ain't worth it. They're trash build quality. They stay drifting. I now open these shits, be spraying them and all that. Like, come on. Now now, I fucking play fucking uh, 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 surgery with this shit. Like, I never did that with any, any, any of my devices. But I really, oh, let me go on Amazon, buy a kit to open the fucking controller. I literally did that. I bought that, got that, opened all my controllers. All right, two survived. The white one didn't. The one that came with the Series X, it didn't make it. So, you know, yeah, you know, it went away. So, anyway, so, yeah, I want, you know, better uh, analog sticks from Nintendo and Xbox, too, in the future. But, yeah, from Nintendo. What if, what if, need the xbox controller that we saw leaked man with the motion and stuff hopefully that'll have some good analog stick so yeah good analog stick with no drift get rid of all those issues nintendo that'll be great you know so yeah i want that and yeah i definitely want that but i don't want trash ones so i'm talking about what i don't want let me not say what i want what i don't want is trash ones you know so yeah please better better and uh, just it being a stronger Switch, like I said earlier, it's not something I want to see from Nintendo. Like, it would be weird to just see Nintendo go, oh, yeah, look, this is a stronger thing. And it's a new generation. It's not like, oh, yeah, Game Boy, you know, and, and then we did, like, like uh, uh, Game Boy Color. It's like, that's what it would feel like to me. Like, even even going from Game Boy Advance to Game Boy Advance SP, Felt like it, you had the clamshell, better screen. I don't know. Like, it's just weird. Like, I feel like Nintendo got to introduce something. Got to do some shit that make you go, what the f- How we never thought about that? We got Rog, Ally, Steam Deck, this, that, this, that. And not one of them thought to add that little fucking thing right there that literally made the whole thing different from every handheld, making all the other ones feel obsolete. They would do some shit like that. It's what I, you know, have come to know from Nintendo. So when I ask this, it might seem like a big ask, but I really don't want them to just make a stronger Switch. As much as I love the Switch. And I get, oh, it, it's the best-selling console of all time. Don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. They literally got here by rocking the boat in the craziest way possible. We're on a failed console, guys. A handheld. Oh, no, it's doing number. Num- num- numbers. What the actual numbers for the company looking like? I mean, we're looking good. We just had Stampedes run right by Xbox, right by PlayStation at E3 for one game. One game. So that's going to be a beast. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, damn, that's crazy. So, so like, so like we not like super down bad. I mean, we down bad. The next thing we do is going to very much define us. But we just let you know, like, we good. We done sold like a billion Amiibos, bro. And they're like, oh, shit. But you still feel like we got to get this right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you think we shouldn't rock the boat? Are you crazy? We need to rock the boat. So we're going to take these guys, right? Who always work on handheld and those guys who always work on home consoles and we're going to take their buildings and we're going to say, fuck them, demolish. Here's this new one. Everybody going to work in there. Console people are over there. Hardware people, you know, like they're over there, the hardware people. 
And they're all working together on a hybrid. And everybody's making games now for this set of tech, this set of power. So you're going to get a Mario and Luigi. You're going to get a name the game and they came to the Switch. Bang, 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 bang. That was the craziest fucking gamble ever. Because now if this thing fails, there is no handheld to save us. That's a gamble, bro. You sure you want to do this? And Nintendo's like, bro, it's literally what we do. It's in our DNA. And it's fine if this fails. We'll just virtue boil it. We'll just, we'll just virtue boy it. Boy, we'll just be right back with something else. And hopefully that'll be a success. Hopefully, and uh, yeah, that's a crazy gamble. But it's the best thing for us as a company is to have everybody under one roof, supporting one platform. This is why we keep having these shaky home consoles, but these handhelds that be doing numbers, because the handheld, it's just cheaper to make games for it, faster to make games for it, and they sell super great. They're everywhere. People could take it with them when they go. They could play it at home. People are just fine playing 3D Land on that. You know what I'm saying? They're fine playing Smash Brothers on that or Mario Kart 7. They, many of them didn't even care to upgrade. And you know they wanted Mario Kart 8, but they didn't want a Wii U. So what do we do? Put it together. And then they put it together and they say, now we release Mario Kart 8 so they can see what it do. And then they released it and then you saw what it did, right? Everybody saw what it did. Now we see what it do. You know, and it worked. So that was a crazy gamble. It wasn't a safe play. It's one of the fucking craziest stories in the history of video games. Yeah, 13 million sold. The thing that saves you, kill it. Because it is what you're doing. You're saying the fallback. Handheld, no, we're going to make it one. You're killing. People oh no, they killed the home console. No, they killed the handheld. Because by making it the home console too, yeah, I, that's the way I always looked at it. It's like, yo, you killed your, your savior. This shit flopped. Ugh. <sighs> Ugh. you know what I mean like because people always looked at Nintendo as the home console where most people really didn't that's just us the hardcore reality people looked at it as what's the device that plays real Pokemon games that one yeah that's the main console and that's been the facts forever so Nintendo saw that better than we ever could and that's why they said no we good trust me when for them they knew what they were doing they weren't killing the handheld they were just upgrading the home console experience but from the outside looking in, if you look at it in a way of like gambling, oh no, you're really risking your handheld business, you know, and making it all flop together and fall with the home console business. It's a dangerous play, but they did that shit. They crazy. So coming off their biggest success, why would I want them to rest on their laurels? No, no, no. Go hard. Go big. Go home. You got the money. Go out of this world. Starship Mario, go. Like, I want to see you do some shit. Some legit crazy ass thing that nobody, you know, would uh, expect, you know. So, yeah. I don't know how I got to this part. But, yeah, I'm pretty much done with what I want, what I don't want. You know, what I really don't care for about the Switch. I hope y'all enjoyed all that. And now, I want to get into the possible Switch launch window games. Mmm. Let's do this. I'm going to try to make this, you know, fairly quick. I don't want to make it too long. But what games do I see possibly launching during the launch window of the Nintendo Switch 2? Now, this game that I'm going to name as the first game, the launch game, the big game, the game, 3D Mario. I've always expected it to be 3D Mario after Odyssey, after what they did, right? But I have a reason to believe that they shouldn't do that. It's weird, but not really. Kind of. I'm going to explain. But before I do that, I just want to say, I would really like it if EPD instead just made Donkey Kong at launch. Yes. The successor to Mario Odyssey, the next thing from that team, Donkey Kong. Announce a movie in 2025. It could be coming 2027. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Seth Rogen, all that shit. Do that. Like, I really, really want to see a 3d donkey kong made by the mario team because there is no mario without donkey kong so i wanted it to be full circle like the mario team said you know what let's do donkey kong and i know some people might be like yo listen if you're a real nintendo fan you would know i know i know jungle b and this shit i know i know what koizumi did before he did galaxy i get it donkey kong came to mario again i'm saying go the other way mario to donkey kong full-blown game all eyes on it you know what I'm saying? I would personally love that, right? But when we talk about launch window two, the three D, the three D Mario game. Let's just talk about because that's what it's likely gonna be. 
the 3D Mario game that I expect. I remember Galaxy coming out in November of, well, basically the next year. You know, basically if you make the launch window like I'm making here a year, let's say November to November, that's what it was in 2006 to 2007. You had Metroid in August. You got Mario Galaxy in November. And it was the same thing with Odyssey. You know what I'm saying? We got it when in October. The console came out in March. It didn't come out at launch. And because it didn't come out at launch, Nintendo wasn't like, okay, we got to use this game to sell the hardware. So we're really selling the hardware and not the game. What I loved about Odyssey was that Nintendo was celebrating Mario. They celebrated that game. They weren't worried about the Switch. Yeah, you played on the Switch, but they were all about Jump Up Superstar, promos, dancing in the streets, epic commercials and everything. And that was the best rollout that Nintendo ever had for a single piece of software. The best. Not debatable. Like, that is factually the best rollout that they... The biggest, most elaborate, crazy rollout that they ever did for a single video game release was Mario Odyssey. And seeing it, it was mind-blowing. Because I was like, not, not noticing that while it was happening. I was like, we're living through the craziest marketing for a single Nintendo game ever. This is wild. This shit got a fucking song that went number one on iTunes. Like, this is wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. So, I could see them wanting to do that again and say, you know what? We don't need that at launch. We could have something else at launch, you know, and alongside Prime 4, you know, because not just Prime 4, because Prime 4 is not enough, sadly. I would love it to be, but it's not. Or maybe they know from the numbers and they see and stuff that, oh, Prime is about to have its Breath of the Wild moment, so it could launch with that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But... Metro Prime will be at launch, but I think that there will be something else there, right? And I, I do truly expect them to just be like, nah, 3D Mario is going to be the thing at launch. We're not going to do the, oh, it launches in the launch window thing like we did like we did with Odyssey and Galaxy. And if they choose to do that, cool. I'm not going to complain because deep down, I want to play 3D Mario day one on my console more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Because it's been so many years. Well, not more than anything. I want to play Prime more than anything because that's been so many years. Ooh, a lot of years, but... Yeah, I'm I'm in need of my new 3D Mario game. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, that that's that. Let let's move on. So like I said, Prime Four, that's a launch game. I 100% now expect Hollow Knight Silk Song to be day one on Switch. Even if it's coming out on Game Pass that same day, it's gonna be a launch title probably for Nintendo's next console. They probably already know. Like yeah, why well, why even rush? Like we right here, we got mad shit coming out. This year, Indiana Jones, Call of Duty game. Like, it's just too many fucking games to name. So why throw this in there? When we could just come next year and we'll have a new Nintendo console to drop on. So I think that's what's going to happen. Hollow Knight Silk Song, day one on Nintendo's next console. Big third-party indie game. Now, the big third-party game, day one on that console, is going to be Black Ops 6 and Warzone coming to Nintendo at launch i'm assume that that's what activision and microsoft are working towards reaching the launch of the new nintendo console right so yeah i expect for launch like i said prime for you know obviously 3d mario game which in my heart i wish was a 3d donkey kong game hollow knight silk song black ops 6 warzone and that just makes me go to minecraft fortnite roblox those games that are all online yeah you're going to be able to go on your console day one and play you know, sign into your account and play your goddamn everyday games, you know, your forever multiplayer games, whichever one you're a part of, you know, Apex Legends and shit like that. I expect those there day one for sure. So those really are like no brainers. They don't even count, but they're worth mentioning because people play those games mostly and not having those games at launch would be detrimental to your console launch for a lot of players. We're going to be like, but damn, I want to play this on my and I got to pull out the old Switch to keep playing Fortnite if they're just Switch exclusive, you know? So you got to have Fortnite there day one. Ooh, HDR, 4K, they never saw it like that. Lumen and all that tech. Oh, my God. People going to be like, yo, Fortnite look crazy. It's like, yeah, bro, it really does. Like, Fortnite really is behind on the Switch when you look at it visually compared to everywhere else. Um, So, yeah. Super Street Fighter 6, day one. I mentioned that already. So that's Street Fighter with all the content. That's a new thing. Full price release. I can see that. And then... Some kind of Square game or collection at launch. Something Square is going to be there. That's going to be like, oh, one of the games from... I expect one of the games that was, you know, locked down on PlayStation for years to be one of the ones that gets revealed. And people are like, oh, shit. Like Final Fantasy VII Remake or whatever the case may be. And that'll be there day one. Now, launch window. This is outside of day one. 
And like I said earlier, launch window is going to be 12 months from whenever it releases. But let's say it comes out, you know, in uh, March. I'm basically going to be talking about games that I'll be launching around the fall and things like that. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Within the launch window, I expect one of these. Yes, one of these. Not all of them. One of them. Mario Kart 10. The next Smash Brothers game. I think that's, what, 7? Uh, Splatoon 4. Or... Uh, F-025, launch in 2025, and F-025 is kind of like 99, but actually it's a whole new game, amazing graphics, 25 players online, right? So I expect something online big from Nintendo, and I see F-099, and I feel like that's probably a test for something. I feel like a lot of the Donkey Kong stuff we've been seeing has been for a reason, you know, because something big, Donkey Kong, is on the way. But, yeah, for the launch window, I expect one of these. Mario Kart 10, Smash 7, Splatoon 4, or F-025. Right? That's one of my uh, predictions for the launch window. Now, in the fall, if the console comes out in March, like the original did, March 2025. In the fall, this is going to be wild. But I expect a Mario Wonder sequel. Why? Because they had so many ideas for Mario Wonder that I could see them just had continued developing the next game with a lot of those ideas and just making a sequel within two years. And that would line up perfectly. Now, granted, you're like, you'll drop another Mario game right on top of 3D uh, Mario. And it's like, it's not on top of. If 3D Mario came out in March, 2D Mario in November... Who cares? They've done this already a thousand times. And you know, right after that, there's going to be a paper. And then right after that, there'll probably be a sequel to Mario and Luigi because that game looks like it's going to be a huge success. Like, and then after that, there could be a Luigi Mansion 4. And then, like, there's going to be Mario games. So I don't even get why anyone would question the release schedule. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, and they're completely different genres, too. You can say, oh, they're just Mario games. That's, like, the stupidest statement you can make. So Mario Party is 3D Mario. And 3D Mario is 2D Mario. And 2D Mario is Paper Mario. And Paper Mario is like the other Mario RPGs out there. Like Mario RPG. You know what I mean? And no, they're all different experiences. Paper Mario is not like Mario and Luigi and the Superstar Saga games and shit like that. You know? Or, or uh, Brothership. You know? It's a different thing. So yeah, I could see a Mario Wonder sequel within the launch window. Call of Duty. Day one. Now, this is not Call of Duty 6. I'm talking launch window in November. There's going to be another Call of Duty, November 2025. This will be the first one that comes out day one alongside all the other ones on Nintendo hardware. So I expect that in the launch window. Yes, two Call of Duties within, you know, the one-year launch window. And it wouldn't be the first time. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Ghost. It happened on the Wii U. A way, way lesser console. You know what I'm saying? When we're talking success levels wise, right? So, yeah, I can see uh, Call of Duty Day 1 release, you know, in November also. So, and, and like I said, I still expect, you know, Black Ops 6 at launch. So, yeah, Doom the Dark Ages, I don't know when it's coming out next year. It could be at the launch if it's already out, you know, early in the year, if it's coming out right around that time, you know. But, yeah, it'll be in the launch window. Whenever it comes out, I think it comes out day and date on Nintendo's new hardware. I think they're already developing. They got the kits. They know what it is. Because, of course, Microsoft has to have it. Because you got to have Minecraft there. Day one. It's the biggest third-party game on the Switch. Especially in Japan. So you got to have that there on the new console. They want people going to want to log into their game and continue playing. On their new, stronger, better hardware. So they have the the uh, console. You know what I'm saying? They need it for Call of Duty. They need it for a lot of other things, too. And that's, you know, why I say, like, Doom... That, it'll be a day one thing in the launch window in 2025. I think PlayStation is going to also have a game on Nintendo. Nobody's going to want to miss out on making money on the successor to the best-selling console of all time. Yes, even PlayStation. You see, they already got the Horizon game. I wouldn't be surprised they bring the Horizon games to Nintendo, the actual games. You know what I'm saying? So, expect a PlayStation game from Nintendo within the launch window. You know, the same way you got Xbox when I named already a bunch of the Minecraft, Call of Duty, Doom, Dark Ages. There'll probably be more, you know, like Towerborn or some shit like that. Like, there'll be other stuff. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds. Again, depending when it launches in the year, it'll be there. Day one, you know, of its launch. Not day one of the console. 
But if it comes out before the console launches, then yeah, day one of the console. But it'll be there when it launches on Nintendo hardware. Capcom is not missing, again, being there on the successor. I said it already a thousand times to the best selling hardware of all time. That gets you everybody. Understand that gets you everybody. So for Monster on the Wild, I mentioned Square Games at launch. A lot of these games coming off PlayStation exclusivity. Yeah, they're going to be spread out throughout the launch window. So expect something at launch and expect something in the middle of the year, later in the year, Kingdom Hearts collections, all kinds of shit like that. Expect the games that were only cloud versions on, on um, you know, Switch, like Capcom games. Expect those, like Resident Evil games or something like that. Expect a couple of those to actually, you know, come over to the new hardware. And then finally, from launch day one, all throughout, Expect the biggest onslaught of indie games. Every indie developer is going to want to be on the successor to, this is the last time I'm going to say it, the best-selling console of all time. Of all time. So, yeah, that's going to be 100% the thing. And finally, last but not least, I lied. I said that was the last time. I got to say it one more time. This... And this is before I wrap this up. This is the successor to the console that dethroned the DS and the PS2. Understand what that is. This is the successor to the console that sold so much software for Nintendo. So many 20 million sellers, 30 million sellers. They even got 50 million sellers, 40 million sellers. It's insane. So many 10 million sellers. So many games went diamond. Two-time diamond, three-time diamond, four-time, five-time. They did numbers on this console. A lot. If this hardware is capable of running your Monster Hunter Wild, your Doom the Dark Ages, all these different games, right? In a good way. Not Mortal Kombat 1 on Switch way. You know, in a proper way that it's like, nah, it's the game. It's a, it's a, it's a comparable thing in the same way the Series S is comparable to PS5 version and Series X version of a game. It's right there. It sits in the ballpark comfortably. Yeah. It's capable, beyond capable, beyond what anybody thought it would be. It's a nice piece of tech. If that is the case, in the launch window, I also expect day one, Grand Theft Auto, Six. And there you have it. That'll be your launch window. Listen, it's hard to pinpoint exactly, oh, what could be then you could theorize, oh, Monolith Soft game could be in the launch window. And I do believe it will be. I do. There's a lot of different things that you could, you know, throw at the wall, a lot of IP. Oh, the next successor to the 3D Kirby game, that could be in the launch window. And I'm like, almost certainly. It's been so long. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot. There's a lot that we could sit here and name. Nintendo is in that same situation. Uh, 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 well, they've been in the situation, but it's in that situation that Microsoft finds itself in now. When Microsoft got to be like, when do we launch these things? We got mad games. Nintendo's been doing that now, juggling, holding on to games, being like, nah, we're just going to sit this one out. Yeah, we don't need nothing in this quarter right here. We got that, that, that. We don't need to drop this big thing right here. Okay, here we come, and bam. Like, you know, so, and I think that's why we're getting like Mario, and we got obviously Metroid, and we getting, and Mario, you know, I'm talking about brothership, and I'm talking. Us getting, you know, a brand new mainline Zelda game at the end of the generation, like we did with Majora's Mask and, uh, you know, Skyward Sword. But it doesn't feel like it's a bad thing this time. Because when we all expect forward compatibility in a sense, or, you know, backwards compatibility, so that, that game will play no matter what. Even if it's not upgraded on the next hardware, it'll play on the next hardware. So it's not like, you know, going from a, a, a GameCube or something to Wii or... or, or 64, you know, Majora's Mask to GameCube. That was a difference. Cartridge to disc. We're not doing that this time. So, you know, it just doesn't feel the same. And there's a lot of other games around it making it feel like, no, it's a perfect rolling into the next generation. It's not like, oh, yeah, it's just Zelda out here by itself. Scott with Sword, that shit was lonely. Lonely at the end of the Wii life cycle. You know, and it was nothing around it. Nah, Zelda's like, oh, no, I got my people. We marry and Luigi here. Like, Peach just dropped. You know what I'm saying? We got a bunch of OG games coming out. You know, people could argue price points. If you don't like it, don't buy it. If you do, buy it. You know, it is what it is. Uh, 
like I said, things I personally don't care for on my list, you know, uh, high priced old games. Like, it's just not my thing. You know, I don't have that nostalgia thing where I jump and start going crazy. You know, when they, oh, you know, they, they nostalgia bait. Here we go. Like, nah, it's all good. Like, I have it for new things. You bring in nostalgia into something new, perfect dark. You know, Mario and Luigi. Oh, it's just Superstar Saga. I wouldn't care. Oh, Mario and Luigi Brothership. Oh, look at those animations. Look at those graphics. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. I like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like I said, listen, there's a lot of games, and there's going to be a lot of people trying to get their games out. Everything can't be there year one. Everything can't be there launch window. But best believe, if the hardware's right, playing Grand Theft Auto in an automobile on your way somewhere is going to be a wild experience when you're doing it on the Nintendo console and not a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally or something like that. It's going to be like, yo, they really got a native version right here. That's wild. But I wouldn't be surprised. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, that's going to do it, man. I expect this thing to be revealed this year. But I don't expect for the big details. I think it's going to be the same rollout for the Switch. And understand this. When it was NX, I literally predicted that rollout. Like, oh, announce it 2016, uh, fall, they're going to announce it. I wouldn't talk about it again until January. That's exactly what they did. And that's what they did, you know? And I was like, yo, and Zelda got to be a launch game. And man, people was like, it's not going to be. And it was, you know? So I think it's going to be the same thing. I think we see it at some point this fall. It could be September, Tokyo Game Show. It could be October. It could be their own direct. It could be wherever the fuck they want. The point is, I believe we're going to see it this year. And then next year, it'll be like the full-blown reveal. These other games are going to be there in the launch window. This is when it's launching. Get hype. Metroid Prime is coming to the console. And it's going to be, you know, a... Uh, uh, built natively the version for it so things are going to look drastically better it's not just going to be like oh it's the you know switch game and up res to 4k basically now it's going to be like no better textures better this better that i could see something like that you know so i hope that actually happens and yeah i expect a lot of that rollout to begin this year so we don't gotta wait long we don't gotta wait long man it's gonna happen and i can't wait to see what they do because them coming off of such success it's hard to really describe this feeling going into a, a new Nintendo console. We've seen Nintendo consoles that were successful and then them go into the next one. And it was Wii U. And once you saw Wii U, you already knew the writing was on the wall. Like, whoa. And then the way they were promoting it. And then the launch line. It was, oh, shit. You know? And then it went the way it went. But I hope that's not the case with this one. I hope with this one, they got it right. I think the library, I think everything that they're going to have ready to go should make it a success right out the gate. I think it'll outsell the wii u within its first three months earlier but i'm just gonna give that grace period three months you know to grace period of can they manufacture 13 million you know i think they will and i think if they do in the first month it'll blow it out it's gonna be mad funny you know it's gonna be a huge success and you're gonna be surprised by how many people who have switches are gonna be okay actually upgrade into the next one because i know a lot of people think like, oh yeah people bought switches handed out switches were thrown around like candy they're not going to do it again with the new one because they're going to be like oh you already got a switch you know you'd be surprised i think a lot of people will upgrade and i think you know having mario kart there in the in the first year would be the easiest way to get people to jump on it honestly if they had mario at mario kart at launch and then had 3d mario in the launch window so they could do their whole jump up superstar crazy you know, roll out for that game, I think that would be the best way to go about it. Because what they did was Zelda and Mario Kart. Remember, Mario Kart was the thing. You could say, oh, Zelda. Yeah, Zelda went on to sell 20 million. This shit, 60. And, 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 and counting. It's crazy. You know, Mario Kart did some crazy numbers. So, Metroid, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, we buying it for Metroid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. We all on Mario Kart, bro. We all on Mario Kart. Mario Kart launches right next to it. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it wouldn't cannibalize Metroid sale. I think people are gonna get metroid people are gonna definitely get mario kart and yeah that's what you want you know so that so that metroid could have that success of oh everything on the switch is selling better than the previous entries that was for every ip from nintendo pikmin metroid kirby everything you know what i'm saying 3d mario 2d mario, like hey, well not 2d mario 2d mario is a juggernaut it's gonna be difficult to top those og numbers but the point is, you know, like they did their thing on the console and everything went on to sell like crazy. So I could see Metroid very much benefiting from all of that early success that a Mario Kart could bring in. You never know. You never know. And that right there is a huge part of Nintendo. With Nintendo, you never know. I spent this whole podcast talking about all these different IPs, IPs that you and I both love. 
I talked about new controls that will become standard by the end of Nintendo's next console generation. That means Sony is doing it with their future console and Xbox is doing it with their future console because that thing that they introduced really became so like normal throughout the generation that it's like, yeah, I can't play this genre or that genre or that genre without the controller having that feature. And I'm not talking about, oh yeah, we got HD rumble, pretty rumble, you know what I mean? Nah, I'm talking about something that is a dramatic addition to the standard controller. And I know it's like, yo, man, it's hard to think of something like that. That's not true. People just got comfortable. They could always continue to innovate. It's the same thing with phones. Phones with their, oh, all of them are just screens for the most part. Now you see people trying different things, folding phones and all that. But controls are still evolving. There's still things that can be added. Hell, Sony, look, look. The dig I threw at Sony, they got the touchpad on the controller. That makes, you know, uh, uh, doing different tasks a lot more comfortable. It's like, yeah, just having that big, you know, touchpad right there is cool you know so navigating this or that or that so yeah i like stuff like that even the xbox you know uh uh what started with the 360 the damn chat pad you know what i'm saying like that was awesome you could have your instant little mute button right there and everything your headphones still plugged in through that like cool stuff like that you know which is still there it's not really talked about like that no more but you talk about all that right like, oh, all these different control things that you can add. Something that's going to become a defining aspect of gaming. And like I said, all these IPs I talked about. And I didn't talk about the game. Right? What's that game, though? And by that game, if you lived it, you know. Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. That slash on that cartridge. Two games that came with your system. That was game changing. That was game changing. The fact that you got arcade games at home, you know what I'm saying? That was game changing because you had shoulder buttons, you had more buttons. Because at the arcade, you had a lot of buttons versus a control at home. You know what I'm saying? So Sega would introduce more buttons. And then, you know, the rest is history. But there was always these games that would take advantage of it. Like, for example, Star Fox. F Zero using the shoulder buttons and and shoulder buttons to barrel roll and all that like it became normal because the games were designed around these new things on the controller and those became huge IPs but you gotta understand We Sports is getting a basketball update tomorrow you gotta understand <laughs> like We Sports came out almost twenty years ago. That's an IP right there. You could want to sleep on it or whatever the case may be. That don't happen around these parts. I never sleep on Wii Sports. I was there. I experienced the camaraderie of people who never played video games. It's before even, you know, touch gener like it's it's right after touch generation, but it's before phones became normal for people. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta understand. I remember people playing the game for the first time and seeing them light up. And I'm like, damn, it's so cool to see people experience video games and nobody is treating it like it's some geeky shit. Oh, you in your parents' basement or nothing like that. That was really the, the beginning of it becoming acceptable. Like, yeah, there was already hardcore gamers and, you know, conversations around giant IPs on PC, on Xbox, on PlayStation, of course. Grand Theft Auto was a thing that was, I mean, that's zeitgeist shit beyond gaming and everything. But people knew of it. How many people was actually playing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, that would eventually happened where it's in those 100 million so 80 million so we sports came out and literally made a console unpurchasable for like a year shit was wild you know what i'm saying and it's that kind of content that i'm talking about what's that though for the next console what is their we sports or it could be a nintendo land now i like nintendo land and many people who play nintendo land with others understood that that shit was fun it was mad creative. The Metroid game in there was fire. Uh, uh, the F Zero game in there was fire. My favorite was the Pikmin game. Like that was awesome. And again, I played that with relatives who didn't really game like that, and they had a lot of fun with that. But it didn't connect, like you know, we sports in the same way that the actual connect didn't connect, like the we did. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm like. 
there could be that game there. So while I sit there and be like, oh yeah, you know, day one, it could be Metroid, and then I go and list Mario Kart this and Smash Brothers that and 3D Mario or Donkey Kong, whichever one they decide to do, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's all well and good, but what about this game? You know, the game that shows you what the controller can do. You know, even Sony caught on to that where Astro Bion was like, yo, we got to have a piece of software that people could play so we could show off, you know, what this little controller could do now. You know what I mean? Like, that's a thing. That's a genuine thing. So, I wonder, what will that be? Like, Switch, I feel like, had arms. Switch had a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Like, throughout the beginning, that really showed off a lot. But, yeah. The next console, if it's doing something crazy innovative, expect that game to be there. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for everybody who tuned in. Thanks for everybody who is a member on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who's been watching all the content, enjoying the Metroid videos, the Zelda videos, and all that. I'm loving seeing all the conversations in the YouTube chat and all that. That's cool to see. You know, it's been a lot of uh, good different takes on all the different content I've been putting out. And yeah, there's more of that coming. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I'll see y'all on the next one. I hope y'all enjoyed all this, you know, future Nintendo console talk. We're very close. You can just feel it. You can smell it in the air. It's right around the corner. Who knows when, but it's right around the corner, you know. So let me know what you want, you know, because I talked about it a lot here, but you could talk about it too. You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments what do you want from the console and what do you not want it to do? You know what I'm saying? Or are you just cool with whatever? Like, yeah, whatever it is, it don't matter. It's Nintendo. I'm going to buy it, so I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to care about, you know, whether they do this or that. And I, listen, I want all opinions. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about it. So, yeah. Until the next one, peace.